I entered today's session amidst the worst downswing I've ever had. I show up to Hustler Casino Live with a $100,000 buy-in and hopes of redeeming myself on the biggest live stream in poker. I find myself in multiple six-figure pots. Will my downswing continue or will I finally book a win? Tune in to find out. Now, let's shuffle up and deal. With $100,000 in front of me, we're back, ready to get started in this Hustler stream. First hand with the straddle on, I pick up 5-3 of spades under the gun on the straddle. There's a hijack raise to 600, button makes the call, big blood makes the call, and I call as well. Going to a flop of 8-5 deuce rainbow, Nick in the big blind throws out a small bet of $200, a measly little feeler bet. Well, what am I going to do with a pair of fives? Happy to call for 200 and two other players behind call as well. So we're going four ways to a flop. So we're going four ways to a turn, which comes the three of diamonds. Binking two pair here, all of a sudden, the big blind now fires out $2,000. Uh, happy to be in here. I call once more for two pair, facing a very large overbet, but it is Nick Airball of all people. Now, we're going heads up to a river, which is the nine of hearts. It looks pretty clean, and once again, Nick fires out huge for $10,000. I snap call, because I'm never going to full two pair. I already knew this one and just like that we're gonna scoop this one a $27,000 pot to start off this stream running pretty hot right now in the following hand let's get some more money here I pick up jack 10 of diamonds in the big blind we get action because the hijack raises the 300 Nick on the button three bets to 1,000 and I'm not going anywhere with 40% of a royal jack 10 suited is just too pretty to look down at and not do anything with so I four bet to 3,500 this gets the hijack to fold but the button does end up making the call so we're gonna go to a flop of 10 4 3 rainbow gotta love this situation to be honest considering I have top pair I'm the four better. I decided to throw out 2,500 into the middle and Nick tosses in a call real quickly. All right, let's go to a turn, which is the Jack of Clubs, bringing me top two pair. Basically sitting with the nuts in my head, I fire out $10,000, and once again, Nick comes along for a call. So we got a really big pot brewing, and the river is the Queen of Diamonds. This is not necessarily my favorite card to see, to be quite honest with you. Mainly, Jack-10 is two pair, but there's lots of other hands that beat me. Like, I could have Ace-King in this spot, which is the nuts. I could have a bunch of sets that could be better. I lose to Queen-Jack or Queen-10. Lots of other situations where Jack-10 is kind of like a middling hand, given all the other strong hands I could have here. So, for that reason, and against the specific player, I decided to check it over to Nick. It'd be pretty brutal if I were to fire out a big bet and Nick jams or re-raises me, but he quickly checks back with a pair of jacks, and I'm going to win this one, scooping a $32,000 pot. So, back-to-back -back hands to start off the stream. Things are going well. All right, let's keep the winning streak going, shall we? Picking up King Jack of Hearts on the button. There's an $800 straddle on because why not? The scheme's getting pretty huge, and I raise things up to $2,400. Straddler, Ishan, three bets to 9000 yeah, this is already going to be one of the biggest pots I'm going to play tonight, I could imagine, because there's going to be $18,000 in the middle when I make the call. We're going to see a pretty good flop in 7-3 deuce, two hearts. Got the flush draw, two over cards, and Ishan throws out a bet of 7000 Looking at my opponent's stack, he has about 30000 behind. It doesn't seem like a whole lot considering how big this pot already is, so... Let's just ship it. I'm all in. He snap calls. We decide to run it twice. Let's hit a king or a heart, please. $80,000 in the middle. I'm trying to hit my flush draw twice. The first run out comes great. Spiking the nine of hearts immediately on the turn. Second run out, not as good. Although I do river a pair, it's not going to be good enough against his pocket queens. And no blood here, but it is an $80,000 pot that ballooned up just because of how big the straddles got. My favorite hand, once again, I looked at it, Jack-10 of hearts. There's a cutoff raise to 250 bucks. Wesley is definitely no stranger to bloating up the size of the pot. He three bets to 1200. Seeing that early on so far, we're only maybe an hour into the stream. He's been super aggro, so I'm going to attack this, and I four bet once again. Put another raise with Jack-10 suited to 3600. 
Action folds around to Wesley, and did I say he is not in the mood to fold? He's definitely aggro today because he puts in another raise to $9,000. <sighs> okay, it's going to be one of those days where we're going to be swinging lots of money, thousands of dollars every single pre-flop situation. I make the call in position, and we're going to go to a flop of Jack, Nine, Deuce, Rainbow. This is fine, I think, all things considered. It's fine because I have top pair. It is not really the most comfortable situation because Wesley is repping really strong hands like aces, kings, and queens. And here, when he leads for $12,000, I thought this was a little big. A little bit confused because I would think he would bet small, but facing a $12,000 bet, I can't go anywhere, of course, with my top pair. I make the call. Turn is the deuce of clubs. It's a complete brick. It's definitely a card that I would expect him to barrel heavy on, and he does exactly that. Wesley fires 27,000, and once again, it's not a very comfortable spot for my specific hand, all things considered. Still, I lose to all the premium hands he's trying to represent, or at least telling me that he has. Do I believe him, though? Not necessarily. It's Wesley, of all people, known for the largest bluff in Hustler Casino Live history. So for 27000 I think I have a good enough hand to do it with. I make the call. With a massive pot brewing here, over $90,000 in the middle, the river is the six of clubs. Another brick, and this time, it's on to Wesley, first to act. I have one of two options. I can call his all-in, or I can fold his all-in, because I don't think he's going to do anything else, but to my surprise, he actually ends up checking, which gives me the green light to see Showdown, which is all I wanted to do. I just wanted to get to Showdown with this specific hand, and he luckily says that I win. I show my pair of jacks. Looks like he had king-queen, ace-king. Um, you guys can see it on the graphics here, but just like that, almost a $100,000 pot. I'm three for three today with these massive pots. Let's keep on steamrolling. This session might become what dreams are made of. We're looking at another 40% of a royal here with the $400 straddle on. The game's getting big. I raise it up to $1,600 with the queen 10 of hearts and I get the hijack to 3 bet to $3,900. Lots of re-raising and pre-flop wars going on here in this session already. I called $3,900 and we see a flop of jack, eight, four, two clubs and a heart. This is actually a pretty good flop, all things considered. I have a gut shot straight draw, I have an overcard, I have backdoor flush draws. Action goes check check to my surprise, and we're going to a turn, which is the seven of clubs. Given how the action went check check here, I can't imagine my opponent is going to have a flush here a lot, so I'm gonna start bluffing with my hand, and I throw out $7,000 into the middle. When my opponent makes the call, I'm hoping to see a brick river and just get him off of anything that he could have here, representing a flush. But when the river is the nine of clubs, this is confusing. I get there with my straight, but there are four clubs on the board, and it's really hard to bluff when there are four clubs on the board and you don't have any of them. So for that reason, I'm out of position. I decided to check thinking that, hey, maybe there's an off chance I win with a straight, right? But when my opponent throws out 16,000 into the middle, doesn't seem likely that uh, this is a bluff size. So I'm gonna let this one go. I fold the straight and lose a $38,000 pot. This was due, right? I was certainly due to lose a big one. All right, everyone, strap in your seatbelts. The next couple hands are going to be insane. The $200 straddle is on. Pepe in the cutoff opens it up to $1,000. Wesley, three bets out of the small bun again to $4,300. Wesley's super aggressive. I'm next to act with pocket sevens, looking down at a pair. I'm in position of the three better Wesley, so happy to make the call and peel for $4,300. Let's try to set mine for $4,000, everyone. Anyways, the cutoff calls as well, so we're going to go three ways to a flop, and it is insane. 654 Rainbow. Couldn't ask for anything more action than this one. Look at the hands, guys, and look at my hands. It's about to go down. Small blind. Wesley ends up checking over to me, sitting with an overpair, open and straight draw. I think I can do one of two things, actually. One, I think my hand could be good a lot of the time. Second, I could also bluff with my hand because, you know, I could very reasonably have a straight here. I could very reasonably have a set here. So against Wesley, that's my plan. I can just pile money in, hope to win, and fold them off of even a hand like aces. So I throw out $7,500 into the middle, and the plan goes haywire because Pepe min raises to 15000 Wesley gets out of the way, and now I'm not in a very fun situation. My plan was to bluff Wesley off of a big hand, but Wesley already folded, and now I have a new opponent to deal with, and it's someone who could easily have 
all the strong hands here on this board. He easily can have sets, and I can't really rep sets if he can also have sets, you know? So uh, facing this min raise for 7,500 more, I'm happy to make the call, hoping to bink my straight now. So I make the call, pot is ballooning up, and we see the bink eight of clubs on the turn. Oh my goodness. Let's go sitting with the straight. I've got to assume it's the nuts because the real nuts is nine seven. I don't think my opponent's going to have that hand here. So I have one of two options. Certainly could check, but considering the action on the flop, it seems like Pepe was really strong here. And I think I've got a stronger hand. So for that reason, I'm going to lead out now for 23,000, hoping I can get exactly like a set to call, a lower straight to call, two pairs to call that wants to try to boat up. For 23,000, my opponent isn't going anywhere. Of course, I wouldn't go anywhere in his situation either. He's trying to boat up and I'm trying to just hold. My opponent calls and now once again, we've got another massive pot ballooning up here. The river is the three of hearts. It's a brick for the most part. I mean, I get there both ways with my straight draw, which is a little bit of an overkill, but I'm glad the board didn't pair. And now it's just time to go for all of it. Looking at my opponent's stack has about $46,000 in front of him. I bet the turn and now I'm going to be all in on the river. Pepe does not look very happy in this situation, granted. To be fair, I wouldn't be happy in his shoes either, but he does end up sticking the call and I scoop a $182,000 pot. Holy crap, everyone. This was an insane hand. It all started with a Wesley Rays preflop. Thank you to Wesley for bloating up the size of this pot. And somehow I'm lucky enough to suck out versus a set and scoop the whole damn pot. I'm up over $160,000 now in this point. You've seen four hands so far, four massive hands, and I've won three of them. In less than 90 minutes of play in this session already, I'm up piles and the action is just beginning because the next deal, or maybe 10 minutes later, I pick up another premium. The $200 straddle is on. There's an early position raise to 500. I make the call with ace jack offsuit and the cutoff. The straddler calls, under the end calls, we're going multi-way and the flop is jack 632 diamonds. Action checks to Nick who throws out a bet of 1800 in early position. He's the pre-flop aggressor and one that can have over pairs. So for that reason, I decided to chill don't need a raise just yet. We're also multi-way and I'm in position. I make the call of the 1800. But now Pepe, whom I just stacked, maybe he has a strong hand here. Maybe he could be steaming. He decides to raise. And it's a min raise this time of 3600. Nick makes the call for 3600. And I... I don't believe either of these people who have a strong hand. Look, Pepe did min raise with the set last hand, but it just doesn't seem like he has a strong hand this time. And when Nick just makes the call, it also doesn't seem like he has an overpair either because I, I would expect that hand to isolate at some frequency. So for that reason, ace jack offsuit, it's the toppest of the pairs and the toppest of the kickers. It's a good enough hand, right? I'm going to put in now a raise. I raise it up to $11,000 and we've got action. Let's go over the action here. Look, I decided to call 1800, but now I don't call the 3600 and raise it to 11,000. Honestly, it feels a little fishy. I'm kind of just clicking buttons and guessing at this point, but here Pepe makes the call for 11,000 and Nick ends up tank folding. He thought about doing a lot of stuff. He talked out loud. He ends up just let mucking his cards, which I'm really, really happy about because I think I'm ahead of Pepe a lot of the time. And we're going to see what happens when the turn is the five of clubs. Now, board's a little bit more connected. Pepe could have five, six. He can have jack five. He can have jack six. But I think he's got a lot of air or worse, one pair holdings like a jack. And on this card, Pepe now fires out 19,000 and leads into me. I, I still have to go with my read. Uh, on the flop, I thought I had the best hand. And here on the turn, it's a little bit scary facing a lead here. But I'm going to go with my read. Going to go with my gut. It's for a lot of money. But hey, worst case scenario, I lose. But I'm already up piles. So I'm going to announce all in. When I do that, Pepe snap calls. That can't be good. Oh, my God. When Pepe snap calls, it is very, very scary. And I inherently went to my gut and was like, let's just run it one time because I assumed Pepe had some sort of set and I might have ran into it given how quickly he called my all in. But 
Good news, everyone. You guys see the graphics. There's no need to be afraid. He just has every single out in the deck. We agree to run it twice. Jack four of diamonds. Any two pair, any straight, any flush. He's going to win it. Both rivers, ace, six. I win both boards, somehow fade half the freaking deck. And here is a $206,000 pot getting scooped my way. Oh my goodness. Up over a quarter million dollars in less than two hours of play at this point into the stream. Very unfortunate for Pepe. Got to give props and kudos to him. He did just get coolered in these back-to-back -back hands that was worth a lot, a lot of money. So can definitely understand his frustration. Nice playing with you, Pepe. I just got super lucky on both times. And those are two of the biggest pots of this session, somehow going my way and somehow holding. After those monstrosity of hands, we go into a little bit of card death or, you know, nothing can really top those two massive pots, right? So for two hours later, we get into this situation where I pick up tens in early position. I raise it up to 500 over a straddle. Andy decides to three bet out of position. Nick in the big blind calls next to act. And with tens, happy to be in here as well, I make the call. So with over $9,000 into the middle, the flop is 9842 hearts. Here, Andy fires out a bet of 3,300. And when Nick makes the call, I'm already a little bit suspicious and not super comfortable with this spot with tens. You know, I have an overpair. It seems crazy to fold, but I actually don't love this spot. But regardless, I just make the call because I think folding seems really absurd. So we're going to see a turn which is the six of spades. Now the board is a little bit more connected and it gives me a straight draw and he seven makes a straight. Now Andy fires out for a bigger size of 7,600 here. When Nick folds, now I have a very reasonable call. You know, I have a straight draw, I have an overpair and I'm getting a pretty good price. So I call for 7,600 and we're off to a river which is a complete brick deuce of diamonds. Now at this point, Andy fires 25,000 and I go into the tank because... I already didn't feel comfortable that my hand was the winner on the flop. And when I don't feel good about my hand on the flop, I certainly don't feel good about my hand now arriving at the river. Granted, I still do have an overpair, but Andy's repping a lot of strong hands. He can have sets. He can have overpairs that are bigger than mine. And does he really have that many bluffs here? You know, all the flush draws bricked out. This board isn't really good for him. I don't really think he's going to be bluffing a hand like ace-king or ace-queen here ever. So... A little bit ambitious, probably a punt. I tanked for a while and wanted to fold, but I just couldn't do it in my own head. My brain said fold, my hands said call, and I get shown the bad news, losing to Andy's pocket queen. So uh, this one was a quick $84,000 pot, my last large hand on stream. And we're gonna go over one last hand post stream. Fireworks happen, we're playing shorthanded, I'm up, a decent amount of money so far to this day, but let's see how this one goes with Queen Jack of Spades on the button. There's a hijack raise to 600 as we're playing 100, 200 now, and I decide to three bet to $2,000. The hijack player ends up making the call, so we got 4,000 plus in the flop. Comes 10, 9, 7. Ugh, so close for that seven being an eight for the nuts. Here my opponent checks, and I have a straight draw, so I think I'm going to be betting this straight draw. I bet 1,500 to start. I probably should have gone a little bit bigger, but 1,500 to go, and my opponent calls. The turn is the four of clubs now, and my opponent checks one more time, and I think I have a decision here to either go really big, or I could just check and realize some equity, maybe just see a free river card, hoping I can hit one of my straights or pair draws. Anyways, I don't do that because I'm up too much money and we're going to keep blasting into the middle. I bet 8,500 hoping to win the pot right here, right now, but he doesn't do that. He, he doesn't. He, he ends up actually just, just calling the 8,500, which doesn't make me feel super comfortable, but let's go to a river, shall we? It's a nine. The board is paired. That doesn't seem really good because he could have pair of nines that wanted to be sticky. Now Rivers trips. My opponent checks one last time. And do I have one last bet in me? I can't win if I check back. And I, I certainly just, just want to win, to be honest. So here we are, $25,000, throwing it out into the middle. And I get snap called by 8-6 of clubs. 8-6, flopping the straight. What a life just getting paid by my punty donkey playing ass. Ah, that doesn't feel very good. It's a really big punt off the stream and I lose a big chunk of my profits and winnings. And there's that. That's how we end off this incredible session. The first hour and a half was just something from a dream. The last three hours, 
might have lost every single pot, but we're off to the outro. Let's see what the totals are. All right, cashing out right now here in the Hustler Privacy Cage room. I have mixed feelings about how today went, to be honest. Uh, for the first two, three hours of the stream, I ran so hot, so hot. And then it didn't last the whole time. I think I peaked close to like 300,000. What ended up happening though, unfortunately, is uh, a little bit of a death run. I lost every pot for the rest of the stream. I lost a huge pot, big punt at the end of the night. And I was in the aim for $100,000 and I ended up cashing out for 272,150. But that's not the whole story. I ended up selling a little bit of action on State King. So shout out to the people who did buy a piece. You guys won a good chunk of money, which is nice. Basically, without really getting into all the numbers, I ended up losing about 19,000 in the profit of that number that I cashed out for because of investors, people who bought action and all that stuff. So the bottom is how much I've per personally profited and uh, not a bad night. Uh, but it is a little bit tough when I was close to 300,000 in profit and then I ended up winning 170. <sighs> the punts didn't need to be there, but oh well, it is what it is. I don't even know I wasn't close to 300. It was closer to like, I was up like, maybe I was close to 250K in profit or something. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button. Always a very successful, fun time here at Hustler. Everything went well today for the most part. All the big punts at the very least didn't have to punt the last one, but thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.